Hey y'all, welcome to Stardust Cinema. I'm your host, Carrie. And today I would like to talk about the 1957 movie, Operation Mad Ball. This is a Jack Lemmon film and one of the last movies that I got to watch with my mother before she passed away. So it's kind of special to me right now. I had never seen it before. So we watched it for the first time together at that point. Now, I think Jack Lemmon is an incredible actor. Um, a lot of his movies are a little too risque for my taste, but the ones that I do watch, I love. Like, he is, he is awesome. So this movie stars Jack Lemmon, Ernie Kovacs, Nikki Rooney, Catherine Grant, who later became Catherine Crosby. She was Bing Crosby's last wife in real life. Um, Dick York, James Darren, who doesn't love Moondoggy, um, Arthur O'Connell, a very, very popular actor from back in the day, um, Sheridan Camarote, or however you say his last name, I'm honestly not sure, Roger Smith, Dick Crockett, William Leslie, I'm going to butcher this last name, Paul Pisser. Kearney or something like that. I know it has to be like Italian, but I recognized him um, from an episode of the Donna Reed show. He played a milkman on there. But this movie, I don't know if there is like supposed to be any actual connection to the TV show Hogan's Heroes. But when we watched it, even my mom was pointing out like so many similarities. For example, I mean, even just the fact that um, Jack Lemmon's character was a private Hogan, obviously in the TV show, it's Colonel Hogan, but he is like just such a slip around behind the brass, make things done, you know, get things done, whatever. So he is trying to organize this ball because it's after the war, you know, all the guys are wanting to date the nurses, the nurses are lieutenants. So they technically are not allowed to date officers, you know, they're all private, all the men are privates. So they're not, you know, they're not allowed to fraternize with officers like that. So he is trying to organize this ball and just the whole, all the mishaps he gets into. And of course this one captain, that like just wants so bad to find something on him and that captain honestly kind of put me in mind of Colonel Plink on Hogan's Heroes just kind of the if he's happy that's when you need to worry um personality to him but just all the little mishaps that they get into trying to and just all the ways that they manipulate this captain and he has not the faintest idea but Colonel, uh, sorry, uh, Private Hogan meets this nurse that, uh, I think it's Lieutenant Bixby, if I'm not mistaken, Betty Bixby. And he is like just enamored with her, but she, you know, she's an officer. She won't really have much of anything to do with him, whatever. So he's trying to get to know her. So he like sneaks an x-ray like some general's x-ray or something of an ulcer and like convinces her it's his but he's working on this thing for the guys and he can't be put in the hospital right now so if she'll just put him on a diet he'll stick to it whatever so he's like constantly having to come to see her and you know just all these different things that he gets into and just the camaraderie between him and his men is just incredible so they had this ball planned, you know, they're inviting the girls, they're all going to sneak out and go do this. Well, the colonel in charge of this um, medical base that they're working on is his brother is a general and he is like coming through close, um, you know, from an assignment and it's going to be shipping out, but he's got a couple of days. So the colonel decides, hey, we're going to throw this big party for him. And, you know, all the nurses are going to be there and stuff. So he restricts the nurses to the base. And of course, it is the same day as 
the ball that Private Hogan and his men have been like working their tails off to make happen. So they have to figure out, okay, how can we get the Colonel to cancel this, his party so we can have our party. And so the girls can go, so they're not restricted to base. So they go to um, Mickey Rooney's character, Yancey, at the, the place where all these men would be shipping out. And they work out a scheme to get that division moved out sooner than they would normally have been moved out. And they like send some of their own men over there and convince the captain to get in on it without him realizing what they're actually doing. But one thing, this was another similarity to uh, Hogan's Heroes to me, and my mom pointed this out too, that the Colonel was having like a ship built or something. And like, you know, the, uh, the lady cut out on the end of the ship. I'm sorry, like, I don't know all the terminology here, but it looks like something from a particular episode of Hogan's Hero. So again, I don't know if there's any relation between these two, but there's definitely similarities, uh, striking similarities, whether or not they're on purpose. But uh, so they get the general and his whole division shipped out. So the colonel has to uh, cancel his party and all the nurses, you know, they're not restricted to base anymore. So the captain that just like, you know, is so on their tails, the captain like knows they're up to something and he can't put his finger on it. So they tell him what they're doing like they have his aide um tell him what they're doing and convince him they he can catch them at this because he's like he always knows they're up to something but he can never catch them at it so his aide convinces him to uh drive one of the ambulances that they're going to be uh transporting these men and the nurses in to the ball and the guy's like you know show up at such and such time all you have to do is back up to the door they'll load up and then you can you know you've got them but what he doesn't know is that they fill his particular ambulance with a bunch of POWs and then they call the uh, military police and have them pull him over <laughs> And he's not dressed as a captain. He's dressed as an just an enlisted man. And the MP, okay, let me, let me back up just a little bit. So Hogan had invited um, Lieutenant Bixby to go to this ball with him. Well, she's mad at him. She won't have anything to do with him. He's like, look, you know, yes, you're a lieutenant. Yes, you're, a, you know, you're a nurse, you're a lieutenant, but you're also a woman. And this is just a chance for us, just me and you no rank no whatever and he was like you know what if you want to come meet me here at such and such time if you don't i hope you have a brilliant military career and he walks off so he's loading all these people into the ambulances and stuff and she is actually trying to get to him and get stopped by the colonel who is obviously you know depressed because he didn't get to see his brother and get to have the party he wanted to so he invites her into the um officers club there and she can't really refuse him because she can't tell the colonel she's going to this ball because the ball is against regulations <laughs> so uh you know hogan thinks so uh, she just didn't come so he's not going and uh the lieutenant finally tells the colonel like listen, you know, I just wanted to be a woman tonight. And he was like, well, as your superior officer, you have my permission. You know, he's just being all fatherly torture. And she was like, but I can't do it here. And uh, he's like, what are you talking about? And she was like, I want to go to a ball. And he's like, where? And she was like, you are the last person I should be telling. But if I tell you, will you promise to forget everything tomorrow? And he's like, absolutely. So she ends up telling him, you know, where and who and whatever. So he takes her. He's like, oh, am I invited? She was like, no, I'm afraid you'd have to crash. He's like, well, come on, you know. So they go. 
and on their way to the ball, the uh, the MPs have pulled over the captain, and I think it's Captain Locke. So they have pulled him over and like found all the POWs in the back of his ambulance and stuff. And of course, he's not dressed in his uniform. He's out of uniform. He is um, doesn't have the paperwork to be transporting POWs because he didn't know there were any POWs in the back of his vehicle. So they like set him up. But the MP that is talking to the colonel right there, I literally like yelled when I recognized him because I don't think I had ever seen him so young. But I believe his name is Richard Bull, but he played um, Nels Olsen in Little House on the Prairie. And I was like, that's Nels. Like I just got so excited to, to see him in that little bit part. So the colonel like just goes along with the lieutenant and is like, nope, this isn't my adjutant, this isn't, you know, my adjutant wouldn't be caught dead out of uniform, and, you know, blah, 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 like, take him away, and uh, send him to my office in the morning, I'll have Captain Locke interrogate him personally, you know, so it just gets him out of the way for the night, gets there, gets to where the ball is, and um, Hogan isn't there, so he sends for him, and, you know, basically Hogan thinks he's in trouble, he's under arrest, whatever, and they all dance, they all have a good time, and it's just like a sweet, hilarious, hilarious movie. Just, I love these like wartime uh, rom-coms like that. So definitely on a scale of one to 10, I would say, I would say a 10 out of 10. Like that one, I was very, very impressed with it. Um, I have it on DVD, but I believe it is on YouTube as well you, somebody could look it up and um watch it there like i said the name of it is operation mad ball and i just love how many like big stars there are in it and stuff i always love seeing something with that many um big name uh people in it so anyway this one's definitely one that i would recommend so um check it out let me know what you think let me know if you've ever seen it and I will be back soon with more Old Soul Love for Old Hollywood. Bye, guys.